welcome to the finale of Maestro. In London's Hyde Park, there are over 40,000 people about to witness the climax of the whole series. On Tuesday evening, Sue Perkins won the title of Maestro, and tonight she claims her prize. In just a few minutes, she'll be conducting the BBC Concert Orchestra and Leslie Garrett in front of that huge audience at Proms in the Park. Well, I'm here in the studio at the Royal Albert Hall with three of the Maestro judges, conductor Simone Young, uh, the double bass player Dominic Seldes, and composer and cellist Zoe Martelou. So it's a big, uh, big moment for Sue. Uh, Zoe, what did you think? Uh, do you think Goldie might have won or, or Jane Asher? Absolutely the right person won, Clive. I'm convinced she's going to do a great job tonight, always completely in control. But did you judges give Goldie higher marks? Uh, Dominic, you in the, yes. the marking on the final, yeah, you gave him big, 10. He got uh, the big fat 10 from me. I mean, his rank right. and off was absolutely extraordinary, but it came down to two different Beethovens and Sue's Beethoven, I think, the, the right conductor won on the night. Now, Simone, you weren't with us uh, for the final. Yeah, congratulations, you were being awarded a medal, a prize, a bronze medal, is it, in Germany? Bronze prize, yes, yes thank bronze. you. Well, well done. But would it have been different had you been there? Would you have marked <laughs> it differently? Have you reviewed the performance of your fellow judges? Well, I caught up with it on BBC4 on Thursday night and watched it, and it's a very different feeling watching it as a TV viewer than in the actual auditorium. You miss that impact of the personality that is happening live. So it's hard to say what I've judged differently, but I do firmly believe the right conductor won. All right. Well, that's, that's good, because uh, we're now going to have a look at how the maestro final unfolded from the winner's point of view. It was terrifying to do that much music and all the variety, and everyone really gave it some. <laughs> was, I forgot there was some kind of marking system, I didn't care. The only time I cared was when I, I really enjoyed the brook. I was a bit sad they didn't enjoy as much as I did. I think there's more that you can do with the beat. Sometimes it's a little bit semi, but I guess that's, that's the nature of judging, everyone has an opinion. Yeah, and the firebird that I felt, I got so into it, that I absolutely cocked it up. There was a little bit of a boo-boo in there. In the middle it went, I was like, oh great. <laughs> For me, the, the bass over five was unbelievable. I knew it'd be a different sound to Goldie, and I knew it'd be a different sound to Jane, had Jane done it. You have to be okay with the sound you make, just in the same way you have to be okay with the sort of person you are. And that's what this has shown me. I can reveal that the winner of Maestro is Sue Perkins. It's been part of a, a sort of ongoing journey to sort of build my confidence, and I can't thank the people involved enough, I really can't. Well, Sue will be conducting three pieces tonight, Elgar's Pump and Circumstance March No. 4 with the BBC Concert Orchestra and then two numbers with Leslie Garrett. We can now go over to Hyde Park to talk to our maestro, Sue Perkins. Hello, hello Clive. How are you feeling? You're, t you're talking about confidence there. And you, you seem to have grown and grown in confidence over this series. Yeah, I mean, uh, at ease, relaxed, confident. These are just three of the things I don't feel at the moment staring at that. Uh, I don't know if you've been to any of my, my solo shows, Clive, but I can expect crowds of anything up to 50. Yes. So, uh, no, I've been to your solo shows and I've been the solo in the audience. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, exactly, exactly that. So this is uh, terrifying. But and, you, I, and you've had a lot to do this week because you've had three pieces of music learning in, in under a week, just a few days. Yeah, it's just the scant two and a half hours rehearsal in total for the three, yeah. so it'll be interesting. But at least you're not going to be judged by these ghastly judges tonight. It's just a performance, the crowd will go wild. If it's good, it's good. If it's, if it's better, it'll be fantastic. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think uh, it would be churlish of me not to go out there and just really, really enjoy it, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, and you've come dressed for the last night of the problem, so yep. I can see just about behind your, your, your microphone. Uh, do you think this is <laughs> do you think this is going to lead you to uh, um, a conducting career as I've been pressing on? So thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, good. You got that now. Yes. Um, uh, anything else you'd like to see of uh, my couture, or are you done there? <laughs> I, I, I'd moved on to talking about your conducting career, but right, okay. uh, you're, you're dwelling on your on your. Course. Um, I'd like. I, I if only I'd been 18 again and, and possibly could have made a, a different choice in my life. But I've really enjoyed it, and um, yeah, it's been an incredible thing to do. Well, well, good luck for, for the rest of the evening, Sue. Thank you, Clive. Yeah, Cheers, thank you. thank you, everyone. All right, away. Away, Sue, to get ready. Now, let's have a look how her rehearsals went during this week. So, three pieces in two days is tough. So, we usually have one piece in one week. So, I've got an aria by Verdi, uh, which really sweetly Leslie chose for me when she knew that I'd won. Speed okay? Yes, Great. spot on. <laughs> I was absolutely all over the shop. Oh, it was me, I was completely out of breath. Leslie's incredibly accomplished, and I don't want to 
to let her down. I feel actually very secure, which is a surprise. I think I would, and I do. Uh, and she's, she's just amazing. There was a lot of sort of stunned crab going on, so I'd get to the end and just pause and hover like that. And in my wildest dreams, I could not have possibly dreamt of conducting the impossible dream. To dream the impossible dream. For me, the whole way I conduct is about being really engaged because I don't have the bulk to be able to necessarily get the big sound. The unreachable one. Yeah. We've done this for 10 minutes yeah. and this for 12. <laughs> so forgive me. I'll just do this. That's right. Yeah. And then one more sound. Yeah. 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 You know, that piece of music and that particular score was used to conduct at the proms when it came to the Albert Hall uh, after the, the Sir Henry Wood uh, venue was bombed. And that just suddenly roots you into what this is all about. Just take a look here. Just imagine 30,000 people singing along to Elgar and then thinking, that's not the way we'd imagined it. That's how I'm feeling. <gasps> quite scary. Very exciting, quite scary. Right, now Simone, uh, in our final we had two women, one man, and that scarcely represents the sort of balance of uh, conductors in, in the conducting world. Um, is there a particular reason why there are so few uh, top-rated uh, conductors, female conductors like yourself? Well, I think it's just a question of changing traditions. I mean, until quite recently, some of the great orchestras of the world, famously the Berlin Philharmonic and the Vienna Philharmonic, still didn't have any women members of the orchestra and of course it's out of the orchestras out of the great musicians that conductors come yes. that's all changing i think we're seeing big change now in the current generation or is it musicians like you dominic uh, male musicians you can't take authority figures who are female you really expect me to answer that are you insane i'm not going to answer that question no <laughs> Move on. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we'll move on. There's one judge that isn't with us, uh, but he has a very excuse. He's actually conducting the last night tonight, and he's in his dressing room preparing to go on stage now. So an ideal time to interrupt him. Are you there, Sir Roger Norrington? Just about. Yes. Now, this, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you when you have maybe other things on your mind, but... Oh, uh, nothing at all, over time. <laughs> do you think that in this series, which is obviously aimed at to be an entertaining series, also gives some insight of what it takes uh, to be a conductor? I think it takes, it shows a lot. I think it's been a real insight into how music works and how conducting works. You don't see all the background, of course, but the foreground you see and you can judge for yourselves, and yes. you did judge for yourselves. Uh, I must say, Sue looks frightfully confident. I wish I felt the same myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is quite a, it's a big evening for you, isn't it? Uh, the last night of the proms, there's a lot goes into it, this. It's moderately big, yes. <laughs> Well, what about uh, your sort of fellow professionals in the world of conducting, uh, looking at this uh, particular programme, the Maestro programme? Have they, uh, were they a bit uh, dubious about the whole process? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't spoken to anybody, but I haven't, haven't uh, spoken to any conductors who've seen it. They might have been, and, uh, and, and I suppose I might have been, but I, I thought it was a marvellous opportunity to, to open up classical music. Classical music is there for everybody, yeah. and it's a great way of showing how, how it works and getting inside it and showing that it's fun. All right. Well, Sir Roger, I, I don't want to delay you uh, too much, since you've got uh, work to do, no doubt, in just uh, calming your nerves. Well, good luck, Sue. That's what I say. Good luck to Sue, and good luck to you, Sir Thank Roger. Thank you very much. Yes. Right. So, 